Play ball! Play ball with Babe Ruth! Play ball with the Navy! The United States Navy brings you the adventures of Babe Ruth. And here to tell you about the immortal Babe is the man who knew him so well, his pal, the popular sports reporter, Steve Martin. Before we move along to the dramatic story of how the Babe saved Dutch Reaver's whole future, maybe I ought to ask, what about your future? Ever think of how the Naval Reserve could help you? Any successful man will tell you that you can't go any place without a specialized knowledge, a skill of some kind. And in the Naval Reserve, which is an entirely voluntary organization, you can be trained in one of the many naval skills. You can get knowledge. And knowledge is money, it's security, and success. And Steve, there's a variety of skills that can be learned. You know, the Naval Reserve, like the regular Navy, is a three-way team, operating on land, sea, and in the air. And there are numberless skills to be taught in each one of them, and taught well, so that a naval reservist can be absolute tops in a civilian job as well. Use your spare time to advantage. Join the United States Naval Reserve, your hometown Navy. Now, here's Steve Martin again, and the adventures of Babe Ruth. This story starts in the North Woods on the opening day of the deer season. The babe and I had driven up in his big car, and when we parked the car and started into the woods, we had plenty of company. Dutch Reber, the Cleveland pitcher, came in right behind us. If I had known you were coming up here, Ruth, I'd have stayed home. You're so lucky you'll get every deer in the woods. Oh, why don't you make another record, Dutch? I hear that lucky stuff every time I hit a home run off you. Now, let's go, Steve. Now, wait a minute, big shot. There's something else I want to tell you. You're not only a no-good lucky jerk, but you're a big mouth punk. Can I get lost, will you? Let's go. Come on, Steve. Ah, you yellow... I never saw you take half that from anybody, babe. How come you took it from Dutch Reaver? I know how it is with him, Steve. He's sore because I've always been able to hit him like I own him. Well, sure, I know. Besides, he's had a lot of tough luck. Hmm? Sickness in his family. Big bills, you know. Mm. Now, let's forget him. We came up here for fun. (laughs) Hey. Hey, look. Oh, that's a ten-point buck if I ever saw him. Wow. Wait till he hits that clearing, Steve. And then we'll let him have it. Here he comes. Drop him. Hey, Steve, that scream. That was a man. Come on. Holy smokes. On the other side of the clearing. Oh, where is it? Oh, hey, man. there he is on the ground. Dave, it's Dutch Reaver. Hey, come on, let's get him to a doctor. How is he, doctor? How's Dutch Reaver? He'll be all right, Mr. Ruth. Oh, that's really? great. Well, he's lost the sight of his right eye. Huh? Oh, no. Oh. I'm sorry. The eye will look the same, but the optic nerve... But, Doctor, is can that... you be sure? Babe, Ruth. Yes, Touch. Come in here. I want to see you. Can we see him, Doctor? Yes, for a minute or two. Right in here. Uh, the doc says you're going to be okay, Dutch. That wasn't the way you planned it, was it? What? You wanted to knock me off and then say I got killed in a hunting accident. What are you saying? Now, look here, Doc. Shut up, Martin. Sure, that's what you wanted, babe. You wouldn't fight me. You never had the guts for that. But you hated me because I showed you up for a yellow belly. And you hid in the woods and shot me. Now, wait, Doc, wait a minute. So I couldn't tell the whole world that their big hero, the great Babe Ruth... He's yellow. Dutch, you're wrong. You're crazy. You'd better leave. He's getting too excited. Yes. Come on, Pete. Now, look, doctor. I'm paying all Reaver's medical expenses. Now, if there's any way to save his eye, hospitals, specialists, anything, shoot the works. I'll foot the bill. It's impossible to save his eye. Huh. Steve, listen. You too, Doctor. I want both of you to promise you won't tell a soul about Dutch's eye. Hmm? Why not? 
Because if it gets out, some ball player will start dribbling those little bunts to D Dutch's blind side. And when they see Dutch mess him up, the other players will have to bunt too, and they'll bunt him right out of baseball. But babe, you don't mean you think Dutch can still play? Well, of course he can. His arm wasn't hurt. He's got a couple of big seasons left to put himself and his family on their feet. If you fellas will keep your mouths shut. Naturally, we promised. And when the next season rolled around, Dutch was taking his regular pitching turn for the Indians and looking as good as ever. But against the big fella, Dutch looked like Superman. And that was a strange thing, because where before the big fella used to hit Dutch like he owned him, well, now Dutch seemed to own the babe. After a series in Cleveland where Dutch horse-collared the babe in two games, I collared the big fella on the train back to New York. <laughs> Babe, you've got to stop easing up on Dutch. I'm not easing up on him, Steve. Now, don't give me that. You're hitting all the other pitches, but when you get up against Dutch, you play dead. I can't understand. Now, look, babe, this race is between us and Cleveland, which means it's between you and Dutch Reaver. Now, they're pitching Dutch against us twice in each series, and everybody knows that as you go, so go the Yankees. So if we lose the pennant, it'll be your fault. Look, Steve, I give you my word, I'm not easing up on Dutch. What is it, then? I don't know. But when, when I get up there against him and, and he gives me that dirty laugh, I see his blind eye. The eye that only we know can't see. And Steve, I keep thinking, maybe I did it. And then, well, he's got the Indian sign on me. Dutch and the Indians kept the sign on the big fella. And when Cleveland came into New York for the final series of the season, they were leading by one percentage point. All they needed was an even split of the four games, and they were in. But the Yankees had to take three out of the four to win the flag. And then those ugly rumors started. As the whole country expected, Dutch Raver pitched the first game and beat us. Twice, with Yankees on the bases, Bay banged into a double play. And that night, the rumors got uglier and louder. The Yankees took the second and third games, when Bay broke up each contest with a terrific home run. But then the fourth game, the big one came up. I was shaving, getting ready to go to the ballpark when the phone rang. It was my editor. He said that the babe had benched himself, and he wanted me to hop over and check on it. It's true, Steve. I'm going to sit this one out. I'm going to let Young Myers play left field. Oh, you're crazy, babe. You can't do that. Sure I can. Huggins got sick again last night. He put me in charge of the team. But, but babe, listen. It's no use arguing, Steve. This is for the good of the team. Now, you've got to listen to me, babe. You've got to play today. Otherwise, people will believe you don't want to win this game. Nuts. I know what I've got to do. It's time to go out now. See you after the game. The Indians got a run in the very first inning. They didn't get any more, but with Dutch Reaver sharp as a razor and setting the Yanks down in order, that one Cleveland run loomed as big as a mountain. There wasn't the noise there ought to be from that huge crowd, and I knew that plenty of fans were wondering about those rumors. Then in the seventh inning, Charlie Cochran of the Sun got a phone call, and when he told me about it, I raced out of the press box and down into the tunnel to the Yankee dugout. I called the babe out. Now, babe, listen, I just heard this. The reporters have got it. They say the players want to bunt on Reba, but you won't let them. You reporters got longer ears than donkeys. Yes, and loud typewriters, too. Don't forget that. Babe, you've got to let them bunt. What's the matter with you, Steve? You know about Dutch's blind eye. Sure, but that's... If we start bunting on him and he falls on his face, everybody will know about it. He'll never pitch another game. Even that, if that's so, then... It is so. Steve, I can't do it to him. Babe, do you realize they're saying that you want to lose this game, that the gamblers are paying you to? Nobody will believe that story about me. Anyhow, maybe we won't lose. You mean, you're going to tell the boys to bunt? No. Well, then how... Never mind. i got to get back to the game, Steve. There was nothing more I could do, and I went upstairs feeling as if I was going to the funeral of my best friend. It was the last of the night. The Yanks were still one run behind, and Dutch had set the first two men down swinging. And then... <laughs> Joey Sewell smacked a liner at the Cleveland shortstop who bobbled it, and Sewell was safe on first. 
Fans made a little noise then, but there wasn't much hope in them. Not with young Myers, who hadn't had a hit coming up. And then I blinked and didn't believe it when I saw that big man with the pipe stem legs walking up to the plate, swinging three bats. But the public address had it. Attention, please. Number three. Luke. Bang for Myers. <laughs> My heart was hammering against my ribs, and I wanted to call out to the big fella, but I couldn't. I was frozen. I wanted to yell to him not to try this crazy thing. If he bungled it, and the chances were a hundred to one that he would, they'd say he put himself into the game to make sure the Yankees lost. The crowd hushed down, and not even the reporters made a sound. The big fella went for the first two pitches, swinging late. I could see Dutch Reaver's teeth as he laughed and called something at the babe. Then he threw two bad pitches trying to get the big fella to go for them. Babe let him go. Then he fouled one. And then Dutch missed the corner for a third ball. Dutch looked Babe over for a long time before the next pitch, giving him that sneering grin. And then he went into his windup and let fly. The big fella swung. as long a home run as I've ever seen, and the Yankees had won the pennant. But how had the big fella done it? Well, I asked him about it in the clubhouse when the happy players finally stopped banging him on the back. Babe, how'd you do it? <laughs> I don't know, Steve. <laughs> I just knew I had to hit a homer. It was the only way I could beat Dutch and still keep his secret. Oh, brother, that's one for the books. It's the only time in history that a pitcher won by losing a big game. You can say that again, Martin. Oh. Oh. Hello, Dutch. I suppose you came in here to pick a fight, huh? No, babe. I just heard that your boy wanted a bun on me, but you wouldn't let him. Uh, who told you that, Malaki? Never mind. I also know about those gambler rumors. I, uh, well, I, uh, just want to say I had you wrong, babe. You're a pretty swell guy. Will you shake hands? Sure. I'll tell you this right now, Dutch. The jinx you had on me is over. From here in, every time you pitch to me, duck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether you know it or not, but the United States Naval Reserve groups in various parts of the country have really active sports programs. In my town, the reserve has, in the regular seasons, baseball, football, and basketball teams, and, well, I can tell you that those Navy guys are right up at the top in all the leagues. Well, that's because they're good friends as well as teammates, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> that's right, Jack. They train, learn, and play together. Great friendships are made that way. Of course, there's more than sports and friendships. The Naval Reserve gives you a chance to train yourself in your spare time. And training means security, and don't forget it. If you're a veteran, you'll probably go into the Naval Reserve with the same rating you held when you were discharged. If you're not, you've got plenty of chances for promotion. And on top of all that, every Naval Reservist has an opportunity to qualify for retirement benefits. You can play and learn and serve with the U.S. Naval Reserve. Join your hometown Navy. Talk it over with your Navy recruiting officer. Next week, I hope to tell you something about the babe when he was just beginning his career in the majors. The story of how he had to learn the lesson of his life the hard way. Well, see you then. Goodbye, Steve Martin. The Adventures of Babe Ruth is written by Ben Peter Freeman, produced by Woody Close, directed by Ronald Dawson, and is brought to you each week at this same time by the United States Navy. Thank you.